Hello and welcome to revisiontuition.com. My name is Simon and in today's tutorial I'm going to cover drugs. I'm going to split this into four subtopics, smoking, alcohol, solvents and painkillers. Okay, so first of all I'm going to talk about smoking tobacco. Now tobacco smoke contains thousands of different chemicals. There are three examples of chemicals contained in tobacco smoke on the board behind me. We start off with carbon monoxide. Now carbon monoxide will join with your red blood cells. When you breathe tobacco smoke in to your lungs, it goes across your alveoli and into the blood and joins with those red blood cells. Now the red blood cells normally would join with oxygen. So if they join with carbon monoxide instead, then it means that you can get less, there's less oxygen that you can transport around your body. Now this is a real problem in pregnant mothers. If pregnant mothers smoke, that carbon monoxide can stop oxygen getting to the fetus stop oxygen getting to the unborn baby and therefore it can cause low birth weight. Okay next we've got nicotine. Now nicotine is the addictive chemical in cigarette smoke. Nicotine actually mimics or copies a chemical in the brain and you stop producing that chemical in the brain so therefore you rely on taking in nicotine to replace it. Next we've got tar. Now tar will move into the lungs and will clog up those tiny little alveoli, those tiny little air sacs in the lungs. It also damages the little tiny hairs in the air passages, in the trachea, in the bronchus and in the bronchioles. These hairs would normally push the mucus in the lungs up to your throat, so if you trap any bacteria in the mucus, the mucus is pushed up to the throat, you swallow the mucus and you destroy the bacteria or any of the microbes in the stomach. If those tiny little cilia, the tiny hairs, are damaged by tar, then that means that the mucus can't be removed from the lungs, so you get a build-up of mucus in the lungs. Tar is also a carcinogen. Now the word carcinogen means a cancer-causing chemical. Smoking can also cause some other diseases, for example emphysema. Now emphysema is when the wall of those tiny air sacs in the lungs, those tiny alveoli, starts to break down. And because the wall of the alveoli starts to break down, it decreases the surface area of those air sacs, so therefore you get less oxygen into the blood. Also you get a liquid leaking into those air sacs, so it's even harder for the oxygen to get across and into the blood. Another disease which is linked with smoking is bronchitis. Now bronchitis is a build-up of that mucus in the lungs and because the tar has damaged the cilia, the cilia can't push the mucus out of the lungs and remove it. So you get more lung infections, more uh, microbes building up in the lungs and reproducing. Another disease which is linked with smoking is heart disease. Now heart disease is a build-up of plaque deposits or fat deposits in the arteries which can lead to a blockage and therefore lead to a heart attack or maybe even lead to a stroke. Now there was a link that was noticed between smoking and lung disease and different types of cancer in the early 20th century but at the time the tobacco companies didn't want to lose trade so therefore they said there's another reason for that link. They said there was genetic factors which made people more likely to, to start smoking in the first place which also made those people more likely to develop certain types of cancer. So more tests were done by scientists at, throughout the 20th century and eventually we've found that there is a more of a link between smoking and these various different diseases. So like I said in the How Science Works topic, you need to look at who's doing the scientific research and whether that, that organisation or that group has got something to gain or something to lose from that information getting out to the general public. Okay, now I'm going to talk about alcohol. Now alcohol is a sedative drug which means that it slows down the activity of the brain. 
and because it slows down the brain activity it can lead to slower reactions. Now this is the reason why drinking and driving is illegal because if it slows down reaction times you're less likely to react in time to a dangerous situation in a car and you might hurt yourself or other people. Also alcohol can make you feel less inhibited it is a sedative drug, it slows down the activity of the brain, but it can also make you lose inhibitions. So therefore it can lead to poor decision making, or lack of coordination, or lack of self-control. And in extreme cases, it can lead to a coma. Now the two main organs that alcohol can damage are the brain and the liver. Because alcohol causes dehydration, dehydration of those brain cells can in extreme cases and over long-term abuse of alcohol can cause damage to the brain. It can cause impaired functionality of the brain, so your brain doesn't work quite as efficiently. Also, it can ca cause damage to the liver. Now, the liver breaks down the alcohol from the bloodstream. It uses an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase to break down the alcohol and get rid of it from your system, from your body. Now, over long-term abuse of alcohol, you can get damage to the liver, and it can cause liver disease. Now, as well as causing all of these harmful effects on the body, alcohol can also have social problems. Now, it's been linked with fights, it's been linked with domestic abuse and murders. Okay, now I'm going to talk about painkillers. Now, first of all, paracetamol. Paracetamol is used to relieve mild pain and mild fevers. Now, it's normally fairly safe to use. However, if you overdose on paracetamol, it can cause severe damage to the liver and irreversible damage to the liver. Okay, next, opiates. Opiates are drugs like opium, morphine, and heroin. They're all highly addictive but they're, they're used to treat severe pain. Now, morphine is used in hospitals to treat severe pain. Also, cannabinoids have been known to treat pain as painkillers, but they're illegal drugs, and also there's often a better alternative to use than cannabinoids. Okay, and finally, I'm going to cover solvents. Now, solvents are found in things like aerosols, paints, and lighter fuel. Now, solvents can cause severe damage to the lungs and to the brain. They can even kill. Now, solvents are actually sedative drugs or depressant drugs, so therefore they slow down the activity of the brain and they interfere with the nervous system. Okay, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Uh, if you'd like some more help on this particular topic, please visit the website and use the email and expert link, and goodbye.